everybody. Good morning. Happy Monday. And welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, and disembodied hands, voice, and brain, Justin. Whatever he managed to, you know, to manifest as today. <laughs> Hello, Penguin. I have not seen you before. Welcome. How's it going, guys? How was everybody's weekend? You made it, Twisted Oma. Good. On time. Pendrake, what's wrong? <laughs> Happy Monday. Yes, it's happy Monday. I'm, I'm like telling myself this. I'm willing it to be so. <laughs> I wish your painting was as dependable as your subbing. That's a good one, Kurtiko. That's awesome. 22 months. Thank you so much. Oh. <clears throat> kind of sucked on the gaming front, but otherwise it was. It just was. Well, good. Well, at least it wasn't bad. I, I was sick, so it was actually kind of sucky on my end. I just did not feel well at all on Saturday. It was uh, it was stuff. It was my medical crap that pops up from time to time. Hi, buddy, Manise. Nice to meet you. I'm Anne. Let us look at our Lizette. Let us look at Lizette. We are being alliterative today. So, obviously, the first Boons USA Mini that we are painting on the stream. And we've done her with a darker skin tone because we want her to be a woodsy elf. Now, today we're going to figure out her hair color. And, uh, <clears throat> you know who I am. All right. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, we're trying to figure out, really, like, where we're going with this. Um, I'm not sure if I like the, here, let me get her in focus. I'm going back and forth on the stomacher and whether I should have it be skin or not. Um... Usually it's more like a contrasting color panel. So I may go back and paint that over. That's why I'm not going to highlight it with the rest of the skin at this time. Um, but I do want to figure out the hair color. And yeah, it's just, you know, when stuff strikes, like I ate something essentially. And it made things very irritated. <laughs> yeah, I did something to it. Something I did and displeased my system highly. So I was very, very tired all weekend. Really drained. Um... So I didn't get, you know, a lot done on a lot of fronts, but eh, you know, you can't, can't fight it. You just got to get through it. When you don't feel good, just get through it. That's pretty much, you know, the story of my life. So um, we have three choices for hair. Like really, we've got a, like we could go light, we could go medium, or we could go dark. When I'm making, when I'm creating a color scheme, I'm always looking at the balance of light, medium, and dark. And right away, medium tone is kind of out. Because her skin tone is there, right? Her skin tone is is a darker skin tone, but it's also, you know, not really, really dark. Yeah, don't you hate it when food bites back? Yeah, exactly. I don't get colds anymore. Like, I don't get sick. I can't remember the last time I had the flu. Like, oh, maybe 10 years, maybe more. Um, in general, I'm a very healthy Anne. But my digestive system is the thing that's out of, out of whack, so. Yep. That's right, Twistedoma. We just have to go, yes, body. Yes, body, I won't do that again. Assuming you can figure out what you did, which is always the challenge, right? Um, so I won't go medium toned with her. Let me get my, where's my color wheel? Color wheel! All right, color wheel grayscale to the rescue. Let's talk in terms of relative, relative scale. So if I'm going to put this grayscale, and I'm going to look at, unfortunately, the white is making it uh, kind of bleach out. But you can do this. You can pop your grayscale kind of up against like the tone and you're obviously the light highlights and shadows are going to be different but you can do a general thing right like you can see that value three is going to be a lot lighter than her skin and you can see that maybe value seven it's maybe getting a little bit dark so overall her skin's probably around a six or a five like, if you just kind of look at it, you know it's, you know, you know it's lighter than eight, right? So that means it's probably going to be somewhere in between there. So you can nail that at around a six or five, which is right in the mi middle of your grayscale, right? So then, <laughs> yes, I'm a lot less of that now since I'm doing my yoga, actually. So I'm doing the, getting the core strength back means that I, I, I haven't been sleeping wonky. Like, I don't think I've slept really wonky, like, where your back, you know, where your neck is bad or your back is bad when you wake up. I haven't done that since I've, since I've been exercising. So that at least helps. 
Um, but yeah, so your skin tone is somewhere on the five or six of a grayscale. That's right in the middle, right? So then if you're going for contrast, which on a 28 millimeter model, you should always be going for contrast. Um, that means you want to go much darker with the hair or much lighter with the hair. Oh, good, Karniko. So do you guys see where I'm going there? Like with that, every choice I make is going to be made with contrast in mind. Um, I do have to think about some other things, like the fact that we're going yellow with her dress because that's what you guys requested. So I know that the dress is going to be lighter. So then I can go back and go, well, if the dress is going to be lighter, maybe I should take the hair darker because the hair will be kind of, you know, up against the dress at various points. So that's, that's an option. We could go with a green black or a, a, a really dark green highlighted with more emeraldy colors. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about the AMA. It's possible because they're reworking guys. They're reworking how they want like subs and points and rewards to be. So if they decide that like, you know, like they're going to turn off the channel for now, I would, I would guess it's just that because you guys know, John has told you and Justin has told you that we're reworking how we're going to do kind of rewards for hitting sub goals and things like that. Um, so I would suspect that since that channel was tied to that, that they've deactivated it temporarily until they figure out what they're doing. Um, Valandar, I've, I've done it and I failed on it like at least four times before I nailed it. So important to find a picture of Damascene um, and to then duplicate what you see. But remember that you have to simplify it. You're never going to be able to get it as complicated. And the other thing I found is that getting it to work with NMM is almost impossible. Like, I would have thought it would be easier to do with NMM. It wasn't. I ended up going metallics. Um, I have not discussed anything with Reaper John, but it's Reaper's call, like, Pendrake. Ah, I see. Cat naming. Cat naming is very important. Cat names are very important. Just ask the cat's musical. Um, what was I? I was maybe going to run out and get my Damascene. Maybe I'll get it toward the end of the stream. But, I mean, really at that point, you need to like get online, look for an image, Valandar, and, and see how the Damascene works on a curved axe blade. Because... I mean, it's it's how they do it is hammering it out into layers. So and it's going to be irregular and it's going to be it's just Damascene is, is probably the most complicated thing you can do on a surface. So if you feel like you don't even have your fundamentals of highlighting and shading down, then you need to back out and probably get those down first before you try to do uh, Damascus uh, layered kind of blade. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I did internet searches till I found a knife that looked very similar to the one I was doing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, are you doing a metallics or are you doing an NMM? Yeah, there you go, Quindy. Thanks. I knew there was an answer. Hey, Val. Right. Though the, though the um, you know, patterned, and some of them do patterned, right? They can be really precise with it, side I used to know a blacksmith who could do, like, little diamond pattern. Like, he said it was a pain in the butt to do a repetitive pattern with Damas Damascene, but... It's actually, Pendrake, they'll be, they'll be predisposed toward one or the other. But um, if you if you look into the Russian fox study where they where they essentially like found that d d domestic yeah, domestication was genetic, you're going to have some feral cats who you never get tame and they just don't have that predisposition. But cats that have remember, you've got both nature and nurture here. So if you've got a kitten that's disposed to be domesticated, but it grows up wild, it's still going to have that that impulse to be friendlier to humans than usual. And it may learn to be friendly to humans, you know, but then if it grows up wild and it stays wild or if it gets kicked out or loses its human and then it has to fend for itself again, it's going to switch that way. 
It's fascinating. The genetics of domestication are fascinating. Don't get me going. Metallics? Okay. Yeah, that's what you should do. Yeah, that's a that's a real pain in the butt. The the patterning you're talking about. All right, so back to back to actual actual talk. But in general, you need a lot fewer layers than you actually see on your knife, Valandar, and try to figure out like if there are, are it's like it's just a very hard pattern because it's somewhat randomish, but it follows it does follow a pattern, but you can't make it too regular or it doesn't look right. It's is really hard. It's really I I found it really challenging. If I went back at it today, I probably could do a better job of it. Um, but it's it is really, really difficult. I did it on a small bust, so I don't think you could do it, like, unless you had a big, clunky, like, fire giant weapon, you could probably do it on that. Um, but you definitely, the bigger the weapon, I think, the easier it's going to be. Yeah, pigs are weird. Hey, Cookie Tigress, thank you for the, the resub. It makes more sense to print a, print a bunch of axes if you're doing an axe. But yeah, print, I mean, print samples and just go to town until you get it. You almost forgot. Oh, no. Yes, prime, prime is evil that way, right? Because if you forget. All right. So do you guys like everybody's talking about other stuff. So I have no idea if you have absorbed, absorbed what I have said about uh, grayscale and figuring out what you're doing with contrast, but I'm just going to go ahead because this is like the thing where a, an actual class is a, a better, uh, format probably than a Twitch stream. So we're just going to go charging in. Uh, so yeah, we got light dress. We could go dark hair. I want to, Hmm. So if you hit this point, with your color choices and you're like, wow, I really just don't know. I was really thinking I wanted to go light with the hair, but then I realized the dress was light too. What am I going to do? So at that point, you really probably want to get an idea of the color of your dress. Like you, you probably have to drop the hair and start popping in the dress colors. Because if you're, if you're really hesitating because you're not sure, because you thought you had, you had your decision and you really want to make the hair lighter, but then you know you got a light dress and you're not sure that that will work, then really you do need to block in the dress and make sure that it will work. Once you have the dress in place, remember colors always look different next to each other than in a vacuum. So once you have the dress in place, it's going to change how the skin looks. It's going to maybe change how the hair looks when you put it on. Then you can see, because the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to paint her hair black or dark uh, and then have to put a light color over the top of it. That sucks. So if I'm going to experiment with hair color with an eye toward trying it and then switching it, if it doesn't work, I really want to go light first because painting dark over light is so easy. Um, so I think what we have to do then is we have to go with our blocking our dress. So, all right, let us see. We need something that covers decently. We said we were going to go greenish with the dress. At this point, I have to ask myself, am I still wedded to that idea? I think I am. You don't see it as much as you see um, other yellows. Usually when I do yellows, I will start with an orangey yellow because it's much easier to build something that covers well by using mustard yellow, palomino gold, any of the ochre colors, um, ogre skin, plus maybe a little bit of palomino or white. Any of those colors make... A great base coat for orangey yellow or brownie yellow if you want to go that way. But you can make this an orangey yellow by just adding a little bit of lantern yellow. So if we were going that way, we could do it. She'd end up being, she'd end up going very brown if we went that way. So I think instead I'm going to grab, I wonder if I want to go, we have to kind of make some decisions here. We have to think about going muted or going bright. And I think I'm going to be highlighting with lemon. I'm going to work backwards. I know I want to highlight up to lemon yellow. And probably that might become our, it can't become our, really our primary. I need to play around because I don't have a, uh, 
I don't have a greenish yellow other than canary, and I don't have canary on my plate. So that means mixing, everybody. So actually, we're going to build something out of clear yellow. We haven't used clear yellow. And uh, I can mix a yellow green out of this. So I want to mix that with a green that's going to have a fair amount of coverage. And Dungeon Slime really has a lot of coverage. But I probably need it to go darker than that. So Dungeon Slime is in the bullpen. I think otherwise I'm going to go... And this is where we have to ask ourselves if we're going muted or going vibrant. If I use this selection of colors, Naga's really bright, Dungeon's really bright, Clear is really bright. Lemon's really bright. This is going to make a really saturated color all together. So then that's going to influence other color choices on the model. It means I have to go bright with the rest of the mini. Um, I don't have an option. I can't go, uh, I can't really go with a grayed out or muted color scheme from there. I have to go pretty vibrant, which isn't a bad thing. It's just a thing. So the other thing I could do if I decided I wanted to tone down my bright a little bit is to add something a little bit more muting, like maybe um, Ancient Oak or Wilderness. Wilderness would be a good choice because it's uh, it's a muted green, but it's still like got a lot of life to it, and it covers like a dream. So let's muck around here. Let's muck around. If I wanted this to be less vibrant in general, I would drop Naga out and put Wilderness in and just use a touch of this mixed into um, some things. So let us look at this. Let us look at this. I have never done a dress that's a greenish yellow before, so we're gonna have some fun. Let's see here. So mixing my base tone, I think I wanna use a lot of clear yellow with some dungeon slime and a touch of wilderness green. If I'm gonna use dungeon as kind of a, a shadow tone with this wilderness, then I need to add a little bit of it into my base coat just to make sure everything works together. This may be a huge failed experiment. We're gonna see. So as usual, I'm starting with four drops of something, four drops of clear yellow in this case. Shake well, folks. The yellow is, uh, the yellows are, I think, they can, uh, they can tend to fall out of solution a little bit, not quite as bad as some of the blues, but I mean, all acryl acrylics fall out of solution if you don't have them well shaken. And Master Series is a little bit better than some so I'm going to put a, two drops of Dungeon Slime and one drop of Wilderness, and I'm going to see what that makes. And we're probably going to look like we're starting with a pale green here. Uh, that was that was not shaken well enough. Where is my there? Whenever you start to squeeze it out of the top, and you see that, that transparent goo, go back to the drawing board. Don't drop it in your paint well if you can avoid it. Go back, shake it again. Color. Trash, tr color. Number is not important to me. I don't find uh, SKU to be a useful... It was useful at Reaper because, you know, it determined where I could find the color. So I have most of these SKUs memorized. But beyond that, as far as actually utilizing colors, I don't find it useful to sort by number. Like, if you actually have the lines memorized, more or less, and you're like, okay, I need to know, I know cores in the 9,000s, and I know, I'm going to put just, a, like, a brush full of water into this, because clear yellow is so see-through, and I've added stuff into it to make it um, cover better. This is kind of a pretty green. So what I ended up with is kind of a chartreuse. It's darker than Dungeon, and it's a little more muted, because... Um, Wilderness has some tones in it that are not super bright, which is part of why I chose it. Because clear yellow is a greenish phase yellow. You got two pr principal yellows, Joe. You got a warm one and a cold one. That's, that's the way yellow pigment works. And then you've got the ochre, the yellow ochre, yellow oxide. But not talking about that. Here are your two different yellows. It, orangey yellow is lantern. That's that's what the orangey yellow pigment looks like. A green phase yellow, as we call it, is clear yellow. So I don't want to go with an orangey yellow. If you add white to this, it goes really, really a nice true yellow, but it's a little bit warm. And since I'm going with colder greens, I want to use clear. Lantern doesn't work. Likewise, lemon yellow has a lot of that greenish green phase yellow pigment in it. So it's a natural highlight for clear or anything you make with clear. There are 
I'll talk about this a lot in, I talk about this in color theory classes and pigment theory classes, but there, there's more than one red, there's more than one yellow, there's more than one blue pigment. And most of the time in today's pigments, those pigments are going to shift either warm or cold. You don't usually have a true spectrum, as we call it, spectrum yellow, spectrum blue, spectrum red. You have, you have pigments or colors or mixes that get close, but usually in, uh, paint design the way Reaper does it and a lot of other companies these days you have uh, a red pigment that shifts one way or the other a yellow pigment that shifts one way or the other so if you want to build a good orange you mix your warming warm shade red with your warm shade yellow and get a nice orange but if you don't then you get kind of a muddy orange so yeah warm yellow cold yellow and dirt yellow and actually the ochre could go either way you can do it either way because ochre, ochre's magic. Well, yellows in general are magic, but people don't give yellows enough cred. You would think that this is warm. This has yellow oxide and a bit of white in it. But this is not entirely the whole story. Ochre, ochre is a very, like, ochre reacts differently to different things. So let's actually add just a little bit of black or gray liner. Let's add gray liner. I've got gray liner here. The way to shift ochre cold is to add black. Oh, got a little bit too much binder in there, and luckily it's, we're only mixing this for color and not for coverage. Shake better. I was just using this the other day. You would think that it would have the courtesy to stay like semi-mixed. Silly, silly liner. Yeah, that's better. This is why you never do a black a black wash over. Uh... So it's going to turn a greenish color. And it's going to essentially become an olive drab. See? It's, a, it's an olive drab because there's white in the Palomino. So it's mixing gray into its olive green. But it's definitely shifting green at that point. And then if you just add a little bit of something like wilderness to add a tiny bit more green pigment to it. Then it shifts much more fully into the olive green range. But it is definitely still an earthy color. It doesn't have the brightness of this. So this is what I'm saying about muted and not muted colors. Is when you want a muted a muted yellow, and this implies uh, this applies to shadows as well. We could use this to shade this color. We'd need to add more wilderness. But eventually we'd end up at a nicely kind of a little bit grayed out green. And because shadows realistically uh, usually go grayish in normal lighting, like you can see the shadows under my neck here, they're gray, right? So if you start with a really bright color, you could still shade with something like this and it would actually be pretty realistic. Yeah, we could just make a dirt yellow for April Fool's Day. But we already have a dirt yellow. We have a couple of dirt yellows. Um, but yeah, so that's why. Like you could shade you can go either way with ochre. Ochre is just ochre's gonna give you a muted result, but it is not uh itself like particularly warm or cool. Um I mean it's probably more warm than cool, but it's it doesn't have that orange hue to it. It's a brown hue instead. So brown being a muted orange, you could argue that it's more orange than green, but I mean then you're, then you're quibbling. It's, it doesn't have a straightforward color personality as much as the other two. All right. I am going to, I think, go light and shade here. I want to put down my... I really have to judge here what I'm doing because I need to go probably a little bit darker. I need to lay down my lemon yellow because that's where I want to end up. That is still lighter than this. This will dry darker. I should be okay with this as a mid-tone. So this is going to look like we're painting our dress green, but we're not actually. We are, however, going to see if it works with our skin tone. And I do probably need... Here's where I'm going to be using the paint close to full strength and not working at my usual 4 to 1. Like, this is more like a 5 or 6 to 1. 
the uh, wilderness and dungeon slime are going to add a bit of uh, coverage to it, which is the point, and I don't want to lose that. But I do need it to self-level a little more, so I'm actually going to grab a brush full of water and mix it in. So when you can see like the paint staying in thicker globs on the surface, you're losing self-leveling. And self-leveling is where the paint kind of flows together and makes a nice even layer, a nice even base coat. It's how you get a smooth base coat, is, is self-leveling. Some paints take a lot of thinning to achieve a nice self-level. And some paints just take a little bit. And by paints, I mean brands. It depends a lot on the, um, the base of the paint. A base that's more fluid out the gate, like Master Series, does not take much thinning to get to the self-leveling point. Pardon me while I get this awkward angle here. Now, as I block this in, I'm going to be judging kind of how it looks against the uh, the skin tone. And so far, it's not bad. It's not bad. However, it does really already make me say the hair has to be dark because it's so light. Hey, Thormel. Blast action. Thank you for the resub. Three months. Thanks. We really appreciate it. Ochre yellow. Uh, yellow ochre is going to be Palomino gold, JS. I was just talking about it. Palomino Gold, 9074. It's the closest thing right now that we have. However, JS, if you um, if you uh, if you went in on the Reaper Bones 4 Kickstarter, or Bo was it Bones 5? Bones 5. Bones 5 Kickstarter, the recent one, um, there is Oxide Yellow, and that is a pure, that's like a clear bright version of Yellow Oxide, which is the current paint pigment equivalent to Yellow Ochre. Nobody actually uses ochre anymore. It's all yellow oxide, which is very essentially yellow ochre. Um, it's just like nobody uses actual burnt umber anymore, unless you're paying through the nose for actual pigments. Everybody's using like a brown oxide that's been treated instead. Very expensive artist pigments might still use the original stuff. But in general, things are shifting. Well, it's still dirt, though. I mean, iron is a is a intrinsically present in our soil. Rust yellow would be like Justin's uh, secret weapon's uh, yellow rust color. I find I find rust yellow to be a uh, be de deceptive, as it makes me think very orange. So I would not use that term. All right. So we've got that yellow dress. It's actually a green yellow green dress. It's a chartreuse at this point, but that's all right. We can bring it up. Um, and I'm gonna have to really determine how I want to do shading. It's really a good question whether I want to, how, how dark I would need to go and how muted I need to go. But yeah, so Palomino Gold is the thing. Self-leveling jazzy means that when you brush the paint together, it kind of flows together. If you brush your paint on and it's really thick, and even when you've, you've brushed it onto a surface like this, you can see that there are thicker places and thinner places and it's kind of got globs in it. That means your paint's not self-leveling. It's not flowing together. Self-leveling can be tested in a well palette by putting pulling your brush through the paint. See how it flows back together immediately afterwards? How, how that line that I pull through it closes up and it flows nicely together? That's self-leveling. There are additives that you can add to paint. Some flow improvers are very good at self-leveling. And some paint lines, as I said, are better at it than others. In general, though, you can get any paint to self-level by thinning it enough, but then you may lose, as I was mentioning, coverage or something else. You may lose another quality. So, yeah, it depends on how where you are on techniques. If you're if you're very good mask penguin at, um, like, if you if you know your like you know your base coat, your wash, your dry brush, then you could skip the first learn to paint kit. 
or unless you want to go back over fundamentals and actually get formulas for working with master series, then it's still very useful. Alrighty, so now I have to ask myself what everything is here. Remember, guys, like her dress had, like we had discussed, like maybe her bodice is a different color. Her sleeves, though, we were pretty sure were part of this ensemble. This is one of those complicated Izzy, Izzy costumes where you have to kind of stop and think. Since we're starting so light with this, I'm going to be going down. I'm going to be shading a lot more. You can paint this way. It's going to be a lot more like painting watercolors than it is acrylics. Well, it's going to go yellow, Crows. I mean, but I, if I'm going greenish yellow, I need to start somewhere. And since I'm going with greenish yellow and there's no, like, understand that yellow green, like green face yellow, is the brightest, lightest yellow, brightest, lightest pigment out there, except for white. So inherently, if you're going for a greenish yellow, you have to start very light. And so I decided to go with more of a chartreuse color and highlight with yellows. I'll end up covering up a lot of this green. But I wanted, I needed a good base coat that would cover well. And clear yellow is a clear. It does not cover well. So I ended up mixing it with two greens with high coverage. Dungeon Slime, which is a lot closer to the color we actually mixed, and Wilderness Green, which is a darker green, but I'm probably going to mix some shadows with it. Because it's, it's and the, both of those are very high coverage. So to do a yellow green, it's like, okay, so to do, a, uh, to do an orangey yellow, you start with an orange. You base coat with an orange. To do like a more muted yellow, you're going to start with an ochre, which is a yellow brown. So when painting yellow, I guess the, the, the reason that it's maybe counterintuitive for a lot of people, you don't start with yellow. <laughs> Not unless you've got a super high coverage yellow, but even then you're going to be like, at that point you have to paint it like a watercolor. You have to start at the top and work down, which is, uh, you know, for a lot of people a little bit more difficult. So if that makes sense. It's because yellow is so transparent and, uh, and also so light. So I, if, I, if I look at the triad, quote unquote, that I'm going to be using or the range of colors that I'm going to be using on this, I would have had to start with like lemon yellow or clear yellow, neither of which will cover. You just test them, AQ. I mean, okay, baseline, if it says clear, it's not high coverage. If you are on my Patreon, I put out a series of PDFs that tells you what the highest coverage colors are in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple in Reaper Paint. So if you're if you're on the Patreon, that's a five dollar level um, reward. But I, I actually gave a short list there of some of the highest coverage colors. Um, but in general, if it is light, it will have higher coverage because it has a lot of white in it. In general, unless, like I said, it says clear, then it doesn't. Um, it, with greens and everything else, it's just trial and error. A lot of colors within a given color field are, are similar in coverage because they tend to use the same pigments, but it also varies how much you thin your paints. Like, as I said, even though these are higher coverage greens, had I thinned them much more, I would lose a lot of this great coverage that I'm getting right now. Instead, I went with more of a five or six to one paint to water, which is thicker than my usual base coat, but I still need it thin enough that it flows together nicely and makes a nice even base coat with no globs. To be fair, many Master Series paints, you could base coat with them right out of the bottle and you'd be fine. I just like the paint to be just a little more fluid for my taste. But I have used um, MSP straight out of the bottle to base coat before. It's just not the style I tend to go for myself. But it's perfectly doable. You just have to watch and make sure that you're spreading it out nice and thin over the whole thing and not leaving globs. Yeah, it does. That's a trick somebody brought up on a previous uh, stream. And I was like, why? <laughs> 
But I mean, it's the same thing. You're just painting yellow over it and then it tints orange. See, my question there, Pendrake, is like, why don't you just use a high coverage orange? In reality, is you can use either. But the reason the pink works is because when you cover it up with yellow, you get an orange. David used that trick on one of his models also I talked about in a previous stream. But he used it to create an orange, not a yellow. And I think he's more in line with um, the maybe a, a more intuitive use of that. And yeah, some pinks are high. Some pinks are higher coverage than oranges, so that makes sense. Though there are... Uh, Fair number of oranges that are pretty high coverage these days. The bottom line, as always, is use what works for you. To me, using pink is just an extra step. Like, I just, I, because for me then, I'm putting down a color that I'm not actually intending to use. I'm intending to use the color that it shows once I paint another color over the top of it. Um, if I'm using that to try to get an idea where my paint stands, though, where my color scheme stands, then I've got an extra step in there that I won't be able to really assess the color until I put two coats on. Maybe three. Yeah, candlelight's a good orange phase. You want to use an orangey-yellow in general, or you're going to mute out a lot, I think. You'll still get an orange, but you'll get a very muted orange if you go with a more greenish-yellow over the pink especially with bca pink which is made with a more of a magenta a cold pigment so it's uh it'll give you a more muted orange all righty Oh, ha ha, I just painted the wrong color on something. Ha ha ha, you guys distracted me. I was, I was mulling over the, the inherent, you know, like, you know, silliness or, or, you know, non an intuitiveness of painting pink before uh, making an orange and I painted yellow instead of green. I'll have to let that dry and paint over it on the back. Yeah, I mean, makes sense if it works for you, Inara. That's cool. I just, I just always would just start with orange. I'd always, I, I start with, uh, for me, I either start with a an ochre or an orange, and uh, usually a burnt orange, and uh, usually I'll mix that a bit in because it has a higher coverage, and I'll work up from that. But like I said, if pink works for you, do it. Yeah. Well, that's because of ghoulie bags. You guys just want candy. But yeah, I mean, pink pink to yellow works for you. Do it. But you won't see me do it on the stream just because for me, it it's kind of counterintuitive for me. Uh, but then, you know, like I said, I, I know, you know, at this point, I know which colors have better coverage. And I'm just going to go straight to an orange instead of creating one from a, from an overlayer. But I tend to be a very straightforward painter that way. Like, all of my complexity and color I add after the fact. I don't start that way. But that's not saying that it's, uh, that's wrong to start that way. It's just different for me. Let's see here. Let's make sure we get this little connecting line. Tiny connecting line, please be good. There. So now that I've got this in, I'm just like, okay, this dress is gonna be light. But now I'm like, hmm, but then is going dark with the hair gonna really, really make you look at the dress and not her face? So this is our next question, right? We've, we've thrown in, <laughs> your wife snags the candy. Oh, 
Oh, I agree with you, except that I really like the Tootsie Roll fruit thingies. Those are kind of kryptonite there. All right. So now we've got a new problem. Our new problem is that the dress is totally taking over the figure. Like, whoa, is it taking over the figure? Because boom, there it is. And this is what happens with yellow. Uh, it can it can really pop in and, and go, you know, in your face, I'm yellow. And then you're like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Um, so now I have to stop and kind of ask myself, how am I going to get attention back to the face from this? Um and it's a very good question. I could I could shift gears at this point and go white with the hair to pop it up even higher and go with go with a greenish white essentially, like the palest of hair greens. Um, but uh, that may be an answer. That's probably the best answer, although I don't know that I'm real thrilled with that answer. And sometimes that's going to happen. Like, that's why blocking this in was a good idea. Because now we're like, okay, new problem. New problem, the dress is very loud. So then the question is, okay, can I tamp down the loudness of the dress a little bit? Maybe? If I add in some shadows, I can add, I can tamp it down just a tad. Because remember, the color is going to shift depending on how much of it you... Uh, well, we'll see, right, Inara? I may not. I may. I may still decide to go really pale with the hair. But yes, the point that Inara is pointing to, and that I was uh, about to make, is that when you add shadows in, you're going to take away some of this bright color, and then things are going to be a little bit more tame. And if you're looking for a nice soft, soft leafy green, Wilderness plus Dungeon Slime gives you that. But I think that might be, and now it need just a little bit of yellow in it. And probably another touch of Wilderness Green, but maybe it's okay. I'm gonna take a brush full of my base, mix it over into that. It'll make them play a little better together. But it's still, if I put it on like the black, the grayscale, that's still really close together. So I probably do need a little more wilderness. Um, it will actually hurt Krios, and that's actually what I had originally planned to do was to freehand the dress. It will hurt because freehand draws the eye. So when you are putting freehand on something, remember that it is going to pull attention away from the model's face. I don't know if I want to make her sort of glow stick blatant and vacant. I think I'm, I'm not on board with that. There we go. So I added another drop of wilderness. Now we have a little bit more of a disparity between these two colors. So let's block in some shadows. Yeah, if you don't want anybody to look, if, if there is a part of the model that you want to distract people from looking at, put freehand on something else. Or if it's bad blending you're trying to distract from, put freehand over the top of it. Nobody will notice your bad blending. Too small. And uh, I'm going to get more luck probably with tightening up her features up here. Um, Creos. So, so there's, okay. So what freehand, what is freehand? Let's talk about what freehand is. Freehand is a very tight cluster of detail, right? You're, you're creating crisp lines and shapes and forms that are uh, very sharp edged and you're drawing attention to them. Now, you can do the same thing with just highlights and shadows on another part of the figure. If I bring in really tight highlights and I dramatize the shadows of the face like that, um, so if I bring her skin tone up another level, I'm going to be able to create the, the same kind of thing effect as freehand because she's got eyes, nose, mouth, you know, we're, we're going to be drawing attention by tightening the highlights on here. It's going to create a cluster of small, tight detail, which is what freehand is. So there are, there are several ways to do this. Um,
Yeah, I'm going to have to thin down my base coat a bit, Kurniko. So I'm going to add another drop of water. And I've already used a bunch of this paint, so... Hmm, I also need to touch up the sleeves on the back because I screwed them up. One second. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, I have chartreuse to color. Oh well. There, that's better. I accidentally lemon yellowed the back sleeves. So I have to bring in my green instead. But yeah, so really the, the point here is that any cluster of tight detail, like the scabbard here, doing all this detail and like really bringing out these little uh, details on the scabbard, uh, the runes on the sword, that's going to create the same effect as freehand in that it is going to draw the eye. So what we've got on this model then is the challenge of a lot, we're being pulled in a lot of different directions. So we're going to have to mitigate that. It's because we've chosen to go so light with this dress that the dress itself then becomes a player in what's fighting for attention on the model. There we go. I wanted to get a second coat on that. Yeah, but then you, you're also... The problem with that, Val, the problem with that is, like, as you're doing that, you're also pulling attention away what, from what should be the focal point. I honestly think the answer there isn't to put make something else really loud, but is instead to work on your faces. I've seen it used more often to uh, disguise bad blending. Like, if, you, if you're not really into smooth transitions on cloth... Um, and you know, you're planning to do freehand on it anyway. It doesn't matter so much because, uh, the freehand will disguise any choppy transitions that are under it. Everybody will look at the freehand. They won't look past it at the actual cloth blend. So that's the way that I've actually seen it utilized most often as far as e making it a problem, a feature. Which is actually, unfortunately, it backfires. That has backfired on me in the past, where I've I've done these uh, these great cloth layers, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to screw them up with freehand. Oh, the back of the sleeves got uh, lemon yellowed instead of uh, the chartreuse. It was very close, but it's super easy to paint a coat of the chartreuse over the top. Yeah, super positive vibes towards you, uh, Twisted Oma. It's rough to be going through stuff like that. Though, given this, I'm like, I'm probably going to make this... I'm going back and forth over the color here. I may need to make it a lighter green. We'll see. We'll see. We have several p spots here where we could do accent colors still. All right. Well, let's do some shadows on this dress and see if we can knock it down a bit. It's going to end up still looking green at this point, but we can work with that. So I'm going to, this, the nice thing about having built this color is, and having it be very close, remember the closer two colors are, the better, the easier it is to blend them. So the fact that this is thinned a bit and it's built with a lot of the same pigments um, and it's still fairly close, maybe it's one transition, maybe one step, maybe only three quarters of a step on the grayscale. Um, but it'll mean that it's so easy to just see how it is there. It just kind of fades in. And then if I want to, I can just build a slightly darker color. You can also do some wet blending. Grab your base coat. Blend it into that thing. So we're, we're uh, knocking it down a little bit. I'm going to put a heavy shadow up here on her hip. And I'm also going to use this time to do a proof of concept. So I've got, once I have the front of the dress kind of with the shadows blocked in, um, and I want to hit the back of this fold too. Because it's kind of like perpendicular to the light. And the staff is there to block the light as well. So now I've got this. Now I want to see if I can bring this all the way up and have it look yellow. 
Um, I've added some pretty dark shadows or some pretty, uh, you know, pretty heavy shadows, meaning I put them a lot of different places. So now I want to bring in my lemon yellow and see if I can bring this dress up to yellow. Yeah, stevia has a taste that can have a you can have a hard time getting used to twisted oma. I had to wean myself on off of it, so I like went half and half sugar and stevia, and then I slowly dropped the sugar out, and then I found that I could have the stevia. But I find I can only really do it. Um, I I could only do it in hot drinks for a while, like the cold cold drinks still threw me off. But yeah, your mileage may vary. You don't want to throw a ton of. Uh, sweeteners into your body either so it's like all about kind of mitigating it i try to drink water for a lot of the day yeah i do the stevia monk fruit blend from um whole earth they they sell the little packets and the tubs i like that though i don't like the monk fruit granulated sweeteners as much so I'm going to bring in my yellow and uh, start covering up areas. I am going to edge highlight this just a little bit. The nice thing about yellow and the reason I like using yellow for highlights is that it is pretty transparent. So it's fairly easy to layer it up. And remember to have this dress look yellow, we need the majority of the surface to be yellow. So this is where we're going to paint over a lot of that nice high covering green we put down and start bringing in more of this yellow. We'll still leave our green shadows where it makes sense, but you do want to cover up a bunch of the green you put down. The other thing about yellow is usually you can bring it up in a couple of different layers and kind of build on itself to make it brighter. Yeah, you probably would have been better off going with like a black black bodice in here, um, crows. Like, because the this could be painted as a separate piece, the bodice and the leather buckles down here and the and the bustier. Um, and then the sleeves, you know, are part of the lower dress. So um, if I was trying to do what you were trying to do, I would probably have made this a contrasting color to break up some of the bright. Um and then, yeah, your accent color becomes a question mark at that point. Maybe the same as the hair color, but it depends. Yeah, monk fruit is another one of those natural sweetening sweetener options, Pendrake. And I find I found the taste a little off-putting at first, but just like some people react badly to stevia. But um, now I use it in my tea every morning. And I use it to add just a little sweetness to my sparkling water, my flavored sparkling water. I make my own sodas. Real sodas are too sugary. I quit them decades ago. When I was a kid, I was so addicted to Mountain Dew, though. Now I'm like, oh, how could I? <laughs> Well, I was just mentioned Wilderness Green is a really good high coverage green that's still uh, fairly bright. You can use it as a shadow and layer up over that Morris. I did a whole PDF on that. Um, I, I can't go into all of the colors off the top of my head. Runic Purple 9424 is probably your best purple. It's a lighter purple though. Although actually the tr the trick with pink that everybody was discussing earlier where you put down a, a light pink like um, in our case they everybody's got a ton of breast cancer awareness pink because Reaper gives it out free in October with orders. Um, but putting down a pink can also be a good start to purples. Hey Otter Mama, how's it going?
going back to what you mentioned about faces, Val, about, you know, if you're bad at faces, you know, should you try to distract people? I think it's important to figure out um, what what exactly makes you, quote unquote, bad at faces. Like, is it just that you haven't mastered the eyeballs yet? You know, that's a whole different thing than um, being like, like, you know, like, or are you bad at blending or do you not understand where the highlights go on a face, right? Like you want to tackle each of those things as a separate part of your painting education. There, there are three different things. Oh yeah. Craft, getting the crafting area back to normal. Yeah. Distance learning kind of sucks. You'd think after absorbing all this like YouTube and internet content that we would be better at distance learning, but apparently not. All right, so I'm pretty much like layering up areas. See how smooth that blend looks? That's like coming up really nicely. Um, and I'm slowly taking over the green. I still haven't quite wiped it out. This still kind of looks chartreuse rather than yellow. Um, right. So then Lord Nobody, what you should practice is something like lining on a figure like this. Like there are a lot of nice details on Lisette and they're pretty crisp. So lining around all of these buckles, concentrating on keeping your brush at a consistent angle, you know, learning the paint consistency, because that's half of it right there. It's brush control, but it's also paint consistency. Um, aw. Yeah, everybody has a struggle day. I had a struggle weekend, Mod or Mama, so I get it. Rich Indigo got discontinued a long time ago, Kuroniko. It got canceled with HD. Um, it is coming back with Bones 5. If you guys don't buy it, though, it's going to die again. So buy it. It's a really good color. <laughs> buy it! <laughs> I put it out again because I thought it was one of those intrinsically useful colors and gorgeous. And it never got a lot of play. But that doesn't protect it from future cancellation if it does not sell. Thanks, Kroniko. Thanks for the reminder. Not quite yet, though. I want to finish up this uh, yellow. It'll be it'll be stretch time. I thought about actually canceling stretch time, to be honest, um, because I'm back to uh, normal. But that that way lies madness, because you know, in reality, that will only undermine my progress. I keep telling myself that. You know, you know how you still want to do stupid stuff, even though you know it's stupid, even though you know that you should get up and take a walk or you should get up and stretch. And then you're like, well, I don't really need to. And then before you know it, you're in this horrible cycle of like just forgetting it all the time. And then your back goes out again and you just want to shoot yourself. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me the reminder guys. And let me, uh, let me manage myself, please. I appreciate it. I do. I do want to get this yellow to a point before I get up and stretch. So it will only take a couple of moments. I just covering up now, so I've covered up almost all the green on this fold. See it? Almost everything around it. We still have enough to be a shadow. Like we still have, see the, the drama there. So you've got the shadow, but we're covering up more and more and more of the green to try to bring this visually into yellow. And it's a challenge. It's a challenge. And one way that we can really knock this uh, into the yellow zone more is if we were going to do, say, a yellow glaze on this. Hey, Roger, thank you. Eight months, seven months streak. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, everybody is telling me, guys, hold off. I'll stretch in a moment. It's all good. Um, it was originally the 45 mark uh, Pendrake, but I always paint past it. Actually, it was always at 1020, but... Like I said, the fact that my um, my back is feeling so much better since I started doing the yoga in the morning, I don't even notice the time fly now. Like my back used to give me like pains at about the 45 minute mark or a little bit after. My back could care right now. It's just like, okay, whatever. Yeah, there we go. All right. So we'll come back to this in a moment.
Yeah, but you know how dumb we are as humans. You know, we, we were like, well, I don't feel bad. I don't have to stretch and hydrate. Blur, 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 blur. And then we know, you know, we totally screw ourselves up. Because in reality, our body is just like, okay, I can hold on a little longer. And we don't realize that our body is like really not happy with us until it's very not happy with us. Sorry, I just spotted a mold line and it, and it offended me mortally deep in my soul. It had to be, it had to be destroyed. All right, peoples. Now it is stretch time. So we're still on a pale green, but part of that is the sleeves too. We're going to have to keep working with this. We're probably going to have to take down that green. We need to add a lot of things to learning. Don't get me on education reform. Like standardized testing needs to be de-emphasized, but we won't go into that. Just like we won't go into fox genetics. But yes, we are, we do tend to be, uh, you, you like, Quindy likes scrunch up and become dehydrated time. Spoken like, yeah, okay, okay Quindy, you're the bad influence in the club, is that it? Oh, I still like standing up though, Pendrake. Getting the blood moving. Just above the buckles and next to her pouch. I believe that this entire thing is a bodice. Part of a bodice. You could paint it that way, though, Twisted Oma. Hold on, let me put on my glasses and glance. Yeah, see, there's a belt. And this area feeds into these buckles. This is the same as these. At least from what I'm seeing. And this is also part of this whole bodice affair, I think, which is kind of an, an elaborate, like belted leather thing across her midsection. That's, that's the way I'm looking at it. Now, one thing I do think I want to do, hold on, is block in this. I think I want to make her stomacher the same yellow. Decided not to go with the skin. It would be uncomfortable to have laces across that. And comfort is key when you're an adventuring elven mage or when you're a normal human. So there. Yeah, sleeping cats are great weights. Until they wake up and open their eyes and give you the evil glare. Yeah, I know you can't see. All of this is part of the same thing. So this area, Quindy, or this area, Twistoma, this thing, do you see how it's part of each of the buckles? Like, otherwise the buckles have no reason to be there, really. I mean, I choose to paint it as part of this whole bodice. There's a belt that goes across here. You could choose to paint it as part of the dress instead. Many painters have. I am choosing to paint it a different way because, for me, it makes more sense that way. But yeah, I think standing up and getting the blood moving makes more sense. Good morning, scrying eye. Long time to see. All right. And stretching on the other side. And then we'll do our other stretches and then we'll get back to it. Want to get this dress more yellow. One more stretch and up. All right, so I want to talk about something about why I may, may decide not to do freehand on this dress. And I'm going to grab another model that we're printing right now and uh, kind of try to explain it. So right now we are fighting, we are having a problem with the dress, as I mentioned, it is very bright. So we're going to need to find a way to pull attention back up to here, which is great. 
But that means if we put freehand down here, we're compounding the problem. We're making it even more that we need to look everywhere but at the face, which I'm not a fan of. Um, whereas with Orc Lady here, remember I was going to do some freehand down on her bottom of her skirt. With her, it's not a problem. And the reason it's not a problem is that her skin tone is so much lighter than everything else. So even if I put some freehand down here, I'm probably going to get enough drama out of her skin tone and the fact that it's light and warm and bright up here. Um, this is probably going to serve to pull the attention upward so that I can get away with a little bit of freehand on the bottom here. Now, I don't want to go crazy with the freehand on the bottom here because if I do, it's going to pull the attention down just like I mentioned before. But I can do some more subtle freehand down here on the bottom and it's not going to interfere, which is whereas with her... You know, she's, we're doing inverse here. You can see it, right? Like this is almost exactly an inverted color scheme. So we've got a very light green on the bottom as opposed to a dark red on the bottom. And then we've got, you know, more of a brown on the top. Um, oh, yes. Thanks, Scrying Eye. Awesome. 13 months. You're after your sub Um, But yeah, so you can see the difference. And where your eyes go is a lot different. When you look at the orc, you go right to her face. When you look, or half orc, you go right to her face. And then when you go to the elf, you look at the dress because that's, that's what's bright. So that's the challenge with doing lighter and brighter clothing with a dark skinned figure is that, and this is the same for if you were doing something like a drow, um, anything with a dark skin tone is a lot harder to pull the attention up to that face. We want to look for the face. So all we need is a little encouragement as humans, but we're going to have to like play with it on this model to see and try to control that um, for it to be like more successful. I could go, as I mentioned earlier, Lord Nobody, the, one of the answers I could do is to go off white with the hair. I could, I could punch it up even higher. And yeah, that would be one way to deal with it. That would be one way. But still, even if I do that, if I go and make a whole bunch of brightly colored flower freehand down here, uh, I'm totally fighting myself at that point. I'm, I'm uh, undermining what I'm trying to do. This, these are D&D &D figures, though you certainly could sub them in for Warhammer Von Kamm. These are Reaper miniatures, since this is a Reaper's channel. Um, so Reaper produces these, and this is Bones USA, and this one is uh, Metal, so the Dark Heaven line. But, uh, but yeah, you can use them for whatever you want, but they're not, uh, they're not Warhammer figures, they're Reaper figures. And usually people use Reaper for D&D. Um, &D. Not always, though. I used some Reaper figures back when I played Warhammer because my game store would allow substitutions. You can also use them for board game minis, the Reaper minis. I've done that. I've been very tempted to do that with some of the board games I have that don't have very nice minis. Still getting a little roughness on the bottom part of that sleeve. Yeah. Oh, we're not even close. We're not even close to done. Thanks, Funcom. This is one that's almost done that we worked on. So, very different from the, we've just started. <laughs> but yeah, this model we've just started. We're doing some skin and then we are working on uh, the dress. We decided we want to do some yellow, but it's creating some challenges with our um, composition, with our color. Like the dress is taking everything over. So we're uh, talking about how to bring the face back into being the most important part. The other thing we could do is we could try to make the hair a really contrasting color that pulls attention away. So I'll debate that. I'm going to pull... Um, I'm going to essentially use a brush stroke to kind of minimize the green even more. And we can do a glaze on this. Maybe I'll do a clear yellow glaze. Although it's coming up now, now that I'm really getting into the green and making like two thirds of this fold is now yellow. So now it's reading as yellow. As far as the figures, or do you mean, I mean, I, oh, do, or do I do commissions? I, uh, I do take commissions, but I am full up right now. I have too many, too many commissions. I'm working on getting, uh, several of them done. Uh, 
A lot of the stuff I paint on Reaper stream, though, uh, I send I send to Reaper. As I am a Reaper employee, and this is what I do for them. Gonna take a base color and just kind of do a glaze. Bring in another bit of yellow. And how smooth you want this, up to you. Um, OSL could backfire on us. But it is a way to draw attention upward because of the glowing uh, Joe. So you're right about that. Um, I could do like a yellow. But then I've introduced more yellow. So I'm like, because anything other than a yellow, like if I put a blue glow up here, it's just, actually it's going to not work um, visually for me. Um, if I did a like purple glow, maybe, but it's still not as bright and light. The problem is we got warm, bright light. Warm, bright light with all this yellow. So I may have to make the hair really light. I'm still annoyed at the bottom of that sleeve, but I'll leave it for now. So let's take this up and pop some highlights up onto these sleeves. And we haven't done our shadows up here either. So let's do it, our shadows. You can see how the highlights show up a lot better when you have a shadow. Um, Voncom, Reaper has um, learned to paint kits. And, uh, you know, lots of companies have kind of a, a, a way to get in. Um, in Reaper's case, we sell a learn to paint kit, number one and number two. That's actually a pretty good deal. We always give a pretty big discount on them, on the materials, uh, because it's really the way to get into the hobby. So that will teach you the basics. And the Learn to Paint Kit gives you uh, like 11 paints and uh, brushes and uh, some models to start on and also a, direct, a set of directions to teach you how to paint those models. And the directions teach you the basic starting techniques. There's a lot of uh, online material. Obviously, I've done a lot of online material. Um, we have a couple other painters also that work on Reaper streams. But if you're brand new to the hobby, highly recommend the Learn Paint Kits. Yeah, you could introduce OSL at this point. But if you did, you'd have a lot of hard questions to ask yourself. Like, what color am I going to go with this OSL? Um, you know... In, in reality, OSL on this crystal is not very intrusive because for the most part, it's just going to light up the inside of this wood, right? And actually, this wood around it is blocking the glow from getting onto most of the character. If I draw a straight line from that crystal, like it only it's, it's hitting like the top of her head, it might hit, it'll hit some of her face. But then see how this area cuts it right off. So you wouldn't even necessarily, like if I pull it from the very top of this crystal, it'll just hit, yeah, it'll just hit her chin. So it would hit her face, but it wouldn't hit her chest, which might look kind of weird. Um, and in any case, you'd probably make it pretty subtle. If you were going to go dark hair, then to me it makes sense to make this glow because you could reflect it better on dark hair. If you're going white hair... Um, the white is going to kind of defeat the purpose of the colored glow. Yeah, I'm just sorry. I'm catching up on chat here. Yeah, I mean, I think that the learn to paint kits are a good start. And then when you've got questions, maybe from the learn to paint kits where you're like, well, what about this or that? Or I don't really understand how to work this color with this. Um, that's when coming on like one of the shows and asking those questions, you can always ask more beginner questions here on my show. I don't mind answering them. I actually like answering them. So, but yeah, you can absorb a lot if you go um yeah there's just there's a lot of good resources i'll talk a little bit at the end we're almost the end of the stream but i have some free stuff on my patreon too to help you like know what techniques are out there and stuff but the learn to paint kits from reaper are really a, 
an awesome, not only are they a bargain and they get you started in the hobby, but it's a relatively small investment to try it out and see if you really like it. Because miniature painting, as people have mentioned <laughs> regarding emptying your closet and all that, miniature painting can get like, you, you could spend a lot of money on this hobby if you want to, but you don't have to. And it's better to kind of see if you like the hobby, I think. And I think the learn to paint kits are a good way to kind of try it out and see if it really appeals to you. I am just trying to get some shadows in here. There's a lot of sharp folds on this sleeve. Oh yeah, in the Discord. Reaper has an official Discord, which of course is free to join. And uh, our community hangs out on there, so it's a good place to get tips and recommendations. Just getting some shadows blocked in here on my green, or on my yellow, my yellow green. I am still pretty happy that I went with the greenish yellow on this, though, because I think it's very suitable for a wood elf. Putting those green tones in there. And I may go with a darker green on this bodice, actually. I'm kind of, kind of going that way, because her skin tone is a neutral. I'm kind of thinking about going with, like, wilderness on this bodice. Yeah, I like to answer beginner questions because I know that there are a lot of people who come and watch who are um, beginners or just getting back into the hobby after, that's very common, getting back into the hobby after years of being away from it and so much has changed. So um, I never mind stopping to explain a technique or a concept or a color or whatever. Always ask. Always ask. If I feel like it's going to be like take, take a lot of time to explain something, I'll be straightforward about it. But in general, this is this is the show that I'm here to answer questions on. Haha. <laughs> Von Kamm, I've been painting since I was nine. And I got gray in my hair now. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of the painting I did before college was just, you know, a joke, right? It was just like throwing colors onto a model because I was a kid and I didn't, you know, know anything. I was an artistic kid, but I still didn't understand highlighting and shading and all that, right? Um, when I got to college is when I started painting uh, trying to get better at painting and that so that would be like if you want like serious let me see how many years has it been man don't make me add this up it makes me feel old um a long time and over that time i've probably painted hundreds at least hundreds thousands maybe thousands because i did have a couple of warhammer armies that had more figures back in the day so maybe thousands of figures at this point but when you can talk about your painting career in terms of decades, it's a lot. <laughs> so so I guess the, the bottom line with that is, though, don't compare yourself to me if you're just starting out. Because, you know, I'm, I'm way along on my painting journey. Even that said, I'm still learning. Like, I still find ways to push myself and I find techniques that I'm not very good at um, that I have to try. Yeah, I'm 31. Right. Off by a couple of... Never mind. <laughs> No, I'm not past the big 5 -oh yet, so. But yeah, I painted a lot. A lot of models. But a lot of those models also were like gaming models, you know, and just learning opportunities. My Wood Elf Army and my Tyranid Army, each of those accounted, the, those together were probably accounted for a couple hundred. But they were very much, they were gaming paint jobs, but I was still learning stuff. You can always still learn things on doing gaming models even if it's just tips for like kind of like dealing with colors that don't cover or um you know just basic how to do a basic fast shadow or highlight stuff like that i don't know muses i'm 48 I don't mind telling you guys how ancient I am. I am, however, the cool aunt as far as my uh, my nephew is concerned. We can talk video games. 
Both my niece and my nephew have tried miniature painting, so I got them some kits. I've done my part. I've done my duty for um, making my uh, younger generation familiar with uh, miniature painting. Uh, nope, I don't. I don't like to use um, the same color liner. Uh, I like to use more natural liner, so I'm using brown liner, uh, Pendrake, because wood wood elf. Essentially, um, I sometimes feel that the liners, although they're useful, I like I like a more a more muted shadow, I guess, and the liners still have a lot of like vibrant pigment in them. So, except for red liner, which I used to love to use for like red hair, I found it was really good for that, but. Um, yeah, green liner I generally I generally don't use. And if I did use it, I would use it the same way I use blue. I would use it on reds, probably. Yeah, that's a lot, Inara. <laughs> yeah, you will never run out of dwarves to paint in this hobby. There are so many. There's so many good ones. All right. Yeah, I just decided to stop in line because I wanted to, um, whenever you're working on a really pale, on something really pale, sometimes it helps to put the shadows in around it so you can see if the shadows on your cloth are dark enough. Because having that dark accent, I'm just going to fill this in. I know it's her hair back here, so I manned up. Oh, and I blorfed. Blorf! There. Yeah, it's harder to find good half works. Like... I was looking for a good female half-orc bust, and I really couldn't find one. Skill 75 did one on their Kickstarter, but I don't think she's in general release. I paint much slower now because I'm working on larger models, and also because painting is my job, so I don't have as much energy for painting outside of my job. Although I did get more work on Halfling, guys. More work done on Halfling. Look, she has, like, metallics. Or she has NMM, I should say. So, yay. She got more work done on her this weekend. She's getting there. I really want to finish her so I can start another model. I'm trying to keep myself from cheating on the minis I'm working on. But, yeah, I, uh... I do paint. I don't enjoy painting fast, really. Like, I'll paint a gaming model if I've got to, but I don't really enjoy it. I really enjoy um, painting a model I really, I like the look of, right? And for me, that means doing at least a decent, like, this is my, like, my Reaper gallery level. And I would say Reaper gallery level is the minimum level that I enjoy. And it probably takes me... Like, eight hours. Eight hours to knock out one of these, sometimes up to 12, depending on how complex the model is. And if it's bigger, a bigger model, it'll take more. But it's all about doing what you enjoy in the hobby. Some people love just, you know, getting all these models painted decently for the tabletop because then they can use them in their games and that gives them the greatest reward. And that, I totally get that. I was painting for a while. I was back, back a while ago, I was painting models for the Descent board game and that was fun. Those, putting a real simple paint job on those was fun. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a line around here. And that is a pouch. So another thing that lining is good for, other than like increasing your brush control, is it lets you kind of like look really close at some things and determine what they are. So like when I got over here, I realized that this little thing here probably actually is a pouch behind this. Like I can see kind of an overlap here like the top flap of a pouch there on her hip. And it's probably behind the strap of the belt here. It may be something else, but I don't see anything else for it really to be. 
could be the bottom of the bodice, but then why isn't the bodice overlapping on the other side? And I can see kind of a line in here. So, hmm, who knows? Sometimes there's just question marks and you have to <laughs> you guys are funny. Three minutes late, yeah. Well, I started a little later, too. Although, notice how adding the lining to this, guys, is crisping it up. Like, it, it actually adds a lot to do some lines around the areas that you've painted to define the areas. Like, it could do even better if I went down here on the uh, skirt. Yeah, we started about five minutes, six minutes late takes a bit like I get the stream going and then Justin has to get the stream set up so so if we do this little bit of lining to bring out these little beckles that gives us a bit of a sharper delineation there oh sorry yes I stopped being so loud because I was thinking <laughs> Yeah, it is me a little bit. I stopped be I stopped projecting in my usual super loud voice. I was musing on things. I did make something really tasty last night. I made um an Indian lamb chop recipe where you lightly bread the lamb chops and fry them after you um cook them in spiced uh coconut milk. They were, um, we were calling them lammy pops because they were, uh, the French lamb, uh, chops. So they had the, you know, the bone sticking out as, as a stick. So they were lammy pops and they were extremely tasty last night. Like a pain in the butt to make because I had to do like three different spice blends, but, um, they were very, very tasty. I love lamb though. So, all right. So I think we're pretty good there. We are, that's, that's all sharpening up very well. I need to add, I've got my shading down. I need to highlight more. I am bringing this up toward a yellow. So I'm pretty happy with this. One thing um, I wanted to mention, Pendrake, when you asked about the reason I, one reason I might go wilderness green with this um, center bodice is that if I go with a more vibrant, albeit darker green on the bodice, it will make the dress actually look more yellow because it will be more green than the green shadows on the dress. So it will actually push the dress to looking yellow to do a green bodice here. So that would be one of the tricks to use to make that go that way. Whereas if I introduce any red at all on this model, that's gonna make this green stand out and look more green. So I have to be careful about that because compliments always act that way. They'll make the other, their compliment will look more intense. Yeah, I went from teacher voice to thinking voice. Yeah, the lining helps. It really helps. So what we did today is we decided to block in the dress because we couldn't really make a decision about the hair without knowing what the dress was going to do. So we blocked it in with actually with a green because I was able to use higher coverage colors to base coat. And then we uh, proceeded to shade it down with a little bit of a darker green and highlight it up with lemon yellow, which is a greener yellow, um, to kind of do a proof of concept to see if our highlights and shading was going to work, which I think it is working. So I'm going to keep working on this. And now I'm, I'm a little happier with the lining in there. I feel like it's balancing out a little bit better. Yeah, I'm going to have a salad for lunch with some leftover um, chicken that we have. Leftover Mediterranean, like yogurt yogurt um, marinated uh, chicken. Yeah, definitely. If you guys are in army painting or speed painting, there's, I think there, I think you're right. There is like a speed zone or something like that on the Reaper, uh, Reaper forums, not the discord. Although it would be a good thing to put on the discord too. All right, guys, I think that's it. We are at seven after. Yeah. I'm liking the green bodice too. It lets me be even more wood elf with her. I'm still quite hesitating on the hair. 
because it's just, I want to get more things kind of blocked in and then we'll kind of make that judgment call. Yes, no judgment zone for sure. Hey, it's, it's unjudge. Everybody hashtag unjudge. Yourself and your minis and your friends. <laughs> and your friends' minis, right? Alrighty. So cool. Who do we have to raid, Reaper? Oh, and tomorrow, be sure to uh, come back. We're going to be working on the genie. I probably will continue on her colored smoke because I'm actually really liking it. Um, we may actually get to some of her gold also because I want to do the lamp. So we, are, we will be playing with this, playing with that on the genie. Now I'm just waiting for disembodied John or disembodied Justin to come in with the, uh, with the uh, who are we raiding today. But anyway, I kind of like how she's coming out. It's definitely a color scheme I would not have used. Like you guys, like that's what the that's what's cool, right? Is uh, is that often on stream with you guys, I'll choose a color scheme that I otherwise would not have gone for, and that's cool because it lets me explain like when I get into color quandaries like this, where I'm not sure on the hair color, not sure on the gem color or accent color, it lets me uh, lets me explain uh, or yeah, explore that. Oh, and I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash painting big. Um, I've got some free stuff on there. So you should go and grab it. And uh, mostly PDFs, but a couple of videos, one, one old video and one, one newer video. Um, but uh, PDFs I think are very, are valuable. And one of them goes with a free lesson on the Reaper YouTube, which is um, thinning MSP paints. So yeah, you came in at the end, love. We're working on the yellow dress, trying to make it look less green. But she is a wood elf, so I'm not too concerned yet. And, we, and we're totally quandrying. We have a total quandary with the hair because the dress is so light and bright. So we're working on it. We're going to work on it until we make it work. Yeah, I think this skin tone does work well with the yellow, which is a happy accident, really. The other thing, yeah, I always, always start with like green or orange or whatever. Some people start with pink and do yellow over the top of the pink because the pink covers better. Love. But yeah, this one I started with. I started with the green because I could make a higher coverage green than my yellow. And then that's why then I'm working up with the yellow on top. So you can see the green on this now when I put it in with the palette. I don't know yet, Pendrake. I don't think green hair is right out yet. One thing I could do to the skin tone to make it work even better with the yellow guys is to build some highlight, like one additional highlight for it with using the lemon yellow that we're using for the dress. Then that would, uh, even if it's just little tiny touches, it would make those two things have something in common. Yes. Reaper, who are we raiding? Reaper. Reaper. Maybe they're all in a ReaperCon meeting. We're stuck here, guys. I'm going to have to go another hour. There we go. <laughs> I don't know about a reflected highlight. I was just thinking of a regular highlight. Usually with dark skin, I'll take it up toward golden golden highlights. But yeah, we'll think about it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys tomorrow. We'll work on the genie. I'm excited. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Monday. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.